Good evening and welcome to 12 News at 6. I'm Kariva Devine. I'm Rachel Cole in tonight for Mark and tonight the I team as Arizona is seeing more and more triple digit temperatures. Families are getting more concerned about their loved ones at Perryville Women's Prison in Goodyear. Since the I team's Erica Stapleton first exposed extreme heat inside of Perryville, uh, prison last summer. There have been some big changes, but Erica loved ones of those who are behind bars say it's still not enough for heat relief. Yeah, guys, the corrections department says they're actively working on heat mitigation. Just today I confirmed some women are getting styrofoam coolers to keep their ice from melting, but families are still coming to 12 news to push for change. Prison isn't supposed to be luxurious, but it is supposed to be safe. I think it's cruel. Meg Stedman's daughter is on the only unit at Perryville that doesn't have air conditioning yet. Let these women have some relief from this ungodly heat up there. Last year, the I-team uncovered that some prison cells at Perryville in July 2023 were regularly in the triple digits, some as high as 109 degrees. Extreme heat that not only took a toll on women incarcerated there, but guards and other prison staff, some hospitalized with heat concerns last summer. The cells impacted the most were units that were cooled by swamp coolers, not air conditioners. When we spoke to state prison director Ryan Thornell back in March. I know we're going to have air conditioning in cells this summer that didn't have it last year. This is true. As of last month, the department said the project to convert to air conditioning at the Lumley unit was 100% completed. But as for the Santa Cruz unit, the project is only 25% completed. And so thinking about something like a swamp cooler in, in Arizona, they don't work when it gets really hot. Laura Seward's niece is also assigned to live in a cell without AC. I don't see anywhere in my niece's sentence that she should be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment of temperatures and conditions that are unlivable. Her family shared messages with us that her niece reported her cell getting as hot as 106 degrees in June, something the department did not confirm. A department spokesperson told me they had no reports within the past three weeks of cells getting hotter than 100 degrees and no reports of heat-related hospitalizations. In mid-June, the Corrections Department enacted its heat relief plan statewide, allowing misters a relaxed dress code, cooling tents, and free ice twice a day at the Santa Cruz unit. Beyond that, the department said ice is available for purchase. Bram Resnick asked Governor Katie Hobbs about the ongoing concerns last week on Sunday Square Off. How confident are you that your prison's director has that under control and the inmates will receive the proper cooling uh, that they should have? I am very confident Director Thornell takes this issue very seriously. There is a heat mitigation plan ensuring that uh, incarcerated individuals have access to water and ice and cooling uh, and and the director and deputy themselves are doing regular inspections of this. Families still want to see more. My niece isn't some monster. She's a person who made just bad decisions in her youth, and she's paying for them now, and we want her to be able to do that safely. And Erica, have they said when the rest of the swamp coolers will be converted over to AC? So, Karibe, we don't have a date from the Corrections Department yet. A spokesperson just told me as soon as possible. This project is an undertaking. Many buildings are old and need to be retrofitted to make this possible. And Perryville isn't the only prison getting a remodel. There are also men's prisons across the state that have HVAC projects underway or in the budget. This work is dependent on budget approval and is expected to continue into fiscal year 2026. Erica Stapleton, 12 News. My goodness.